Hello everyone, welcome to Radiology Case Review Series. In this video, we are going to look at imaging of a pediatric patient who presented with regression of milestones. Patient was walking normally up until seven weeks ago. Then the parents noticed patient was limping. I'm going to start with radiographs, which was read out as normal. If I look at the lateral view of the spine, in retrospect, we can clearly identify scalloping of the posterior aspects of the vertebral bodies with marked widening of the spinal canal. Patient subsequently underwent MRI examination. On this T2 stir images, we can clearly identify spinal mass, which is seen in the region of cauda equina. There is scalloping of the posterior aspects of the vertebral bodies. The T2 images are slightly degraded by motion artifacts. So we have the corners, we have the cauda equina. So we have a mass in the region of the cauda equina, which is widening the spinal canal with scalloping of the posterior aspects of vertebral bodies. We can also see the masses extending into the neural foramina. Following administration of intravenous contrast, there is avid enhancement of the mass. Again, we can identify scalloping of the posterior aspects of vertebral bodies. On the post-contrast axial images, we can see intradural extramedullary mass, which is expanding the spinal canal, extending into the neural foramina. Patients subsequently underwent CT spine examination as part of pre-surgical planning. We can clearly see the mass which is avidly enhancing with multiple foci of internal neovascularity. On the bone windows, we can clearly identify scalloping of the vertebral bodies. On the axial images, we can see the scalloping of the vertebral bodies. We can see the spinal mass extending into the neural foramina. So we are dealing with a pediatric patient who has mass in the cauda equina, intradural extramedullary mass in the cauda equina, which is scalloping the posterior aspect of the uh, vertebral bodies, extending into the neural foramina. The mass is homogeneously enhancing and demonstrates internal vascularity. In terms of differential diagnosis, this is a very nice radiographics article which talks about intradural extramedullary spinal neoplasm. In terms of our patient, the most appropriate diagnosis to entertain would be mixopapillary ependymoma, which is a tumor commonly seen in the cauda equina in pediatric patients. Other differential diagnosis to consider would be paraganglioma. Also other lesions which can potentially occur in the cauda equina would be meningioma, schwannoma or neurofibroma. At pathology, this turned out to be spinal neuroblastoma. When I did literature search, there are hardly few articles which I could find on cauda equina neuroblastoma. In this case report, which I found in the literature, they mentioned that uh, up to 15% of the neuroblastomas can occur in the spinal cord. These patients have gradual neurological symptoms, just like what we saw in our patient. Our patient underwent emergency posterior decompression due to neurological symptoms. Following surgery, patient underwent chemotherapy and is doing very well. I hope you found this case to be informative. Thanks for your attention.